Howdy everybody, this is going to be my tutorial video for the anti-aircraft train I made and I'm going to do it differently than the other ones. Uh, before I just make an edit on how to use a train, but uh, this time I'm going to go with a, a commentary approach. It's uh, going to go a little more into detail, probably a little less entertaining personally. I don't care. If you want to use my train, got to watch the video. So uh, the first thing you're going to have to do is obviously uh, download the schematic it's uh it's a pretty big file obviously it comes with the uh the steam engine the tender the control car and the cannon car one thing you are going to have to look out for uh none of the frame blocks are going to have uh actual blocks inside of them so you're going to have to go around and do that yourself uh, i'd show you on video but it's self-explanatory you just you know you fill in the blocks where they need to go the only thing I'll say about the frame blocks is for either side of the steam engine, you do have to uh, use these um, hazard blocks from Create Dreams and Desires. It just gives it that cool look that uh, connects the line from the front to the back. After you take care of all the frame blocks, the next thing you're going to have to do is go around and fix all the problems that come with schematics. Uh, so the two main things is anything that uses wires, uh, the wires are going to be missing, and any tanks or vaults. Uh, they're gonna be bugged. So there's one uh, circuit of wires here and then in the cannon control cart there are two other ones and In the cannon car There's a lot of vaults. So I uh, have fun with that. I'll, I'll show that in a second, but uh, For these wires over here um, You just have to have them go from the alternator into the battery battery to the relay and relay to the electric motor. And this section of the steam engine is just so you can jump start it without having to hand crank anything. So it just makes it more convenient to use. Uh, and then inside of the control car, um, all these alternators are being powered. Imagine the steam engine's running, being powered, and it sends electricity into the battery. So you just connect uh, four of these to one of the nodes and the other four to the other node. And then for the electric motors that power the rest of the train, um, same deal. You just connect the uh, node from the battery to a relay and then relay into these four motors. And then for the cannon car, um, it works a little differently from my other trains. Um, it has a shell factory on the inside, which uses a lot of vaults and mechanical arms. So um, a lot of times they come bugged from the schematic. You just have to go around and fix them. Um, you got one by three facing this way. We got three of them over here. Um, you got three one by threes over here. Uh, they should like look like this. If you see any white lines that are intersecting in the middle, they're not connected. And um, the bigger vaults tend to not come bugged as much, but like I said, keep your eye out for it. Otherwise, the uh, the way this mechanism works is uh, it's not going to work correctly. Um, so you got all those back there, and then there's also um, two sets of them further in the uh, in the cart. After you're done taking care of all the uh, technical issues, um, you can finally move on to actually starting up the engine. So uh, there are a few controls you have to be aware of in the front. Uh, and I, I tried to change the labels on them so they you know, look a little better and uh, easier to understand. Uh, this is the clutch. This is uh, what stops power going from the engine to the battery car. And the reason you'd wanna use this is if you're actually starting up the motor um, the only way the motor can power everything is if it's at level 9. So you have to have it activated while you're uh, setting up the steam engine. Uh, the middle one is for the battery. So if you were to flick this, it would send power from the battery car to the cannon car. And then the purple one here is the starter motor. So if you, uh, you, know, you set up your engine and you run out of power and you want to start it up real quick, you can just flick that lever and it'll power the uh, electrical motor on top. For the first time starting the steam engine, you're going to need to have 27 lava sources in here, um, 9 for the steam engine, and 18 for the uh, cauldrons down here so it can make its own lava. Uh, you're going to have to flip this facing towards the pulley and you just have to bring that down. And basically what it'll do is when the engine starts running, it'll actually pump lava out so it can start regenerating. And whenever you're done running the locomotive, you can just set this with the wrench uh, to face the other direction and it'll pick up all the lava for you without um, having to do it with a bucket. And after you take care of the lava, you also have to put two water sources in here, one in the corner and one inside the pump. 
you also have to put one bucket on top of this depot um, you're gonna have to dig into the wall on the outside but uh, once you got it in there it's good once you have lava water and the bucket in the right place you have to pull that lever down and then you can just power one of the blazes and insert some water into the steam engine after that it'll start running on its own and it's going to take a little while at first you got to be patient but it will eventually uh spawn all this lava up here and um if you let it run for a little while it'll actually fill up with um, lava over time and then once you get it running you can just uh, get rid of all this uh, temporary stuff you could also just hook up a uh, creative motor to one of these but um if you're playing in survival i guess you could do it like that actually you know now that i think of it nobody would ever actually do that once your engine is at level nine then you can flick the lever over here and uh, start sending power to the battery once you've taken care of the steam engine and the battery, you can flick this lever down and it'll start powering the cannon car. Congratulations, you got through the boring crap. Now to what you're probably most interested in, the autocannons. Um, pretty easy to use. Um, you just activate the remote, space lets you activate and deactivate, and then it's WASD to move them around. So nothing too crazy. And then to shoot, you just hold shift. But um there's two things you got to do before you can start shooting um i have uh what are they the creative crates in there that spawn all the parts you need but you are gonna have to load it with empty auto cannon cartridges and you can just throw them in the top it'll take care of the rest uh the other thing you're gonna need is uh these little dudes bunch of allays if you give them empty auto cannon cartridges and they uh, drop on the floor they'll pick them up and don't come to me don't come to me don't come to me come on you're supposed to hear the note block and you're gonna drop it in right there you go it'll drop it in there and then if we go on the inside uh we missed it but if you go on the inside um it'll fall through the roof go into this vault and then it'll go down this production line and get sent to uh these two vaults down here which is where all the ammo is stored cool thing about a lace too is you can give them leads and you can actually uh, right click a seat even if they're not near it and they'll sit into it so uh they're pretty easy to manage uh as long as you don't have too many and then if you want to get them out of the seat you can just uh well kick them out and they'll go and find their way uh and then for the empty shells you can just you know put them in however you want and if we go in there again it's very satisfying um but yeah i'm not sure how many it makes per minute but it makes enough um so i guess i'll explain it uh this section of it just gives them three charges of gunpowder and then it'll go it'll go in this vault here and then in this part it'll give it um, the flak rounds this one gives it proximity fuses and this one gives it a uh, flare so when you shoot you can actually see it and then it just pops out of this vault here and these mechanical arms will uh, just deposit it all the way down the train and then in here is where um, all the different parts are actually uh, stored so if you had a shulker box with the right materials you could put them there too and uh, this kind of acts as a label of where to put everything so you got gunpowder flak rounds proximity and uh the flare <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,